as Africans, we ask ourselves, how can we make this continent a continent which is a magnet, which attracts us and makes us retain our people in this continent? That is our constant struggle. Many are families that are persuading their children, go out there into Canada, go out there into Australia, go out there into the United States of America and get a second citizenship just in case. Just in case. Why, we must ask ourselves. Because we have not created conditions that make it conducive for us. This is a contradiction of the age-old saying that wherever you go, home is always best. In the minds of most of us, home is not best. And we are gathered here today to consider how we can reverse that anomalous situation. And we can. We are talking about you who are in different sectors of the industry going out there and rolling up your sleeves and telling this generation and generations yet to be born that it can be done and that it must be done. One of the greatest disadvantages that we have in Africa is that we are always starting things. One generation starts and it ends, another generation starts and it ends. One of the adverts that I love is Johnny Walker born in 1862 and he's still walking strong <laughs> and, and, and the reason why I love it is because there must have been a succession plan there was a succession plan that is why nearly 200 years later they still claim that they are making the same flavor as it was in 1862 do we have companies that will go to heaven with us? Of course, the companies will not go. They'll just suffer here, bankruptcy and insolvency and all. These are the questions that we must ask ourselves. And I'm suggesting to us that those of you who are in industry, all of us must have this succession plan. Because that is what leadership is all about. Leadership is about preparing the next generation. Leadership is about creating an environment that ensures that those who come after you are better than you. And there is no greater recompense for a founder than to create an environment where those who are following him or her are going to thrive in a much more robust environment. Today, Africa is asking herself many questions, and these are questions that were asked. They are foundational questions. Foundational questions because when we were fighting to regain our independence, we were making promises to ourselves that we would be in a position to feed ourselves. We would be in a position to exploit our resources. We would be in a position to create our institution. The question is, are we doing so? I remember in that very spirit in 1980 african leaders sat in lagos in nigeria and came up with what is was called the lagos plan of action the lagos plan of action which was to run between 1980 and the year 2000 had one promise that we are going to ensure that there is intra-african trade and when you want to have intra-african trade there must be free movement of peoples there must be the open skies. After the Lagos plan of action, we had the Yamasukru agreement in Yamasukru in Cote d'Ivoire about the movement of aircraft in our spaces. We had the Kigali agreement on the free movement of persons. We had the Maputo declaration. We had the Malabo declaration. No shortage of declarations about what we are going to do. No shortage. But the question is, is what have we done and what are we doing? Then in, 19, in the year 2013, and it's not lost on me, we came up with Africa Agenda 2063. That is Africa's grand agenda. If there is anything that we have now promised ourselves is 2063, we can make our contribution now because in order to get 20 to 2063, 
We've got to break it down into year one, year two, year three. It is cumulatively that we do it. There, there is a great African saying which I love, that when a river gets into the ocean, it loses its name. We are mere rivers getting into the ocean of life. And when we get into the ocean, we no longer talk about rivers. We talk about the ocean. And we are telling you that that is what we must do under Africa Agenda 2063. And what are we saying about Africa Agenda 2063? That we as Africans shall have a respected and a respectable voice in the world scene. And what does that require? That our politics is right. We elect men and women who can serve us and who know that service is leadership. That we can feed ourselves that we can take care of our affairs and that we can participate in the world affairs on an equal footing with others. And that is only going to happen if you men and women who are present here and others who are elsewhere recognize that Africa must begin to trade with ourselves. We now have the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. And we are telling ourselves under the Africa Continental Free Trade Area that we are going to eliminate tariff and non-tariff barriers. That if I have a product like rooibos, which you produce in South Africa, that product is going to get into Bajul de Gambia without any tariff and non-tariff barriers being imposed on it so that we are able to trade within Africa. Otherwise, it is still cheaper to get an item from Shanghai in China, bring it to the continent of Africa, and it's still cheaper than getting an item from Namibia. So you who are here, think of Africa. Don't think of South Africa, which has a population of only 58 million or 60 million at best. We are 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion, that is a market, but it is only a market when people have money in their pockets. So you imagine that you are a business person in produ producing a product and you have a market of 1 billion. That is how China gets it right. 1 billion people consuming an item. It can be done, it has been done today. The Mecca that all middle class people want to visit is Dubai. Dubai, as the good pastor said, was a desert 50 years ago. Today, they have converted the desert into something that is a magnet. In your own neighborhood here in Mauritius, Mauritius is becoming a magnet with a population of no more than 3 million. In your neighborhood here, Seychelles is becoming a, ma a magnet with a population of no more than 800,000. We can do it, and it is all of us combined that must do it. This is what we are promising ourselves. We are promising ourselves that all these currencies that we have, including your around, will disappear without a whimper or with it, but disappear nevertheless so that we are able to come up with one currency. It can be done. And when we do that, you imagine, yesterday I flew for three hours, 30 minutes from Nairobi, Kenya, and I had a few shillings in my pocket. Those, the, the shillings I